Hello, my name is David Vai. I am a Senior Product Marketing Manager here at Cadence. And today, uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the enhanced load pull capabilities that have been added to the Cadence AWR design environment, at least version 15. Uh, through an expansion of the Harmonic Balance Tuner component in V15, it is now possible for designers to control the impedance that is presented to a nonlinear device, such as an amplifier, at harmonic frequencies up to the fifth tone, as well as the baseband frequency as defined by the difference between two tone excitations. This new capability has impact on amplifier linearity performance that is driven by the low frequency impedance termination, uh, largely determined by the uh, characteristics of the biasing network. Uh, intermodulation distortion is a multi-tone distortion product that results when two or more signals are present at the input of a nonlinear device. Uh, so for an amplifier or mixer, uh, the spurious products are generated due to the nonlinearity of the active devices. Uh, nonlinear distortion products uh, can be problematic to broadband systems. However, for a narrow band circuit, uh, bandpass filtering can eliminate most of the undesired products without affecting in-band performance. However, the third order intermod products are usually too close to the fundamental signal to be filtered out making amplifiers susceptible to any distortion products in the passband. So for an example, if the two tone or the two signals are separated by one megahertz, then the third order intermod products will be a one megahertz tone on either side of the two fundamental signals. The closer the fundamental signals are to each other, the closer these products will be to them. Uh, filtering then becomes impossible if the intermodulation products fall inside the passband of the filter. So there are many published papers, and a lot of PA designers have the experience uh, uh, to recognize that uh, an amplifier intermod distortion response is related to the amplifier's nonlinear uh, device characteristics, as well as the uh, baseband termination impedance. And so with this new capability, we're able to vary that impedance and look at the impact on the uh, uh, intermod products. Uh, the updated load pole script in V15 uses the new HB Tuner 3 element, uh, to uh, control these impedances at up to three uh, additional frequencies, including the fourth and fifth harmonics of the fundamental, and uh, as I mentioned, the baseband frequency, um, which is the difference between the two excitation tones. Uh, as the uh, fundamental, second, and third harmonics in V15, these impedances can be fixed at a specified value, or they can be swept as part of the load pull analysis. So in this video, I will uh, present a microwave office project uh, that uses the enhanced uh, HB tuner probe and a two-tone load pull setup to minimize the uh, intermod products, uh, thereby improving the in-band performance uh, by reusing uh, or reducing uh, the levels of these distortion products. So here's a two gigahertz power amplifier example that's using a two-tone baseband load pull analysis to investigate the impact of low frequency impedance on the third order intermodulation products. Uh, the active device itself is a 10-watt uh, GAN hemped from Wolfspeed. It's a popular device used in many aerospace and communication type applications. And it was used in our recent IMS workshop on high efficiency Doherty PA design, uh, which is available on the Cadence AWR microsite at awr.com. So if you wanted to know more about this particular device and its use in a, a PA design and tutorial on in impedance matching and the use of load pull uh, in more detail, uh, you can check out that workshop. This is the basic load pull setup uh, with a um, harmonic tuners on the source and the source and the load with, with parameters that define the impedances or we can sweep that as well as uh, all the biasing. In this particular case, there's a, a matching network that's designed to the uh, conjugate of the S11 uh, small signal uh, input impedance. Uh, this used so that we have a, a reasonable match uh, between the source and the uh, gate of the transistor to deliver most of the power to uh, determine the load pull under, uh, under drive. We can set up this template using the scripts under the load pull. Uh, it's a create load pull template utility. It will pre-populate a, um, a template with an, an ideal Curtis 3 model, and then we would just replace that uh, transistor uh, with the one of interest. Uh, this is the um, new tuner. So in, in V15, we automatically populate this template with the HB Tuner 3. Uh, which now has an added parameter that we can we can add uh, 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 additional 
uh, terminations beyond the third harmonic. So we can do the fourth and the fifth harmonic. Uh, but this parameter here, Fm, uh, if it's zero, then we don't perform a bass span uh, load pulp. But if it's non-zero, uh, then we perform, um, uh, we define the bass span intermod frequency and we can perform a load pull at those frequencies. So what we would do is uh, replace the DUT. We define the FM frequency, it's 100 megahertz. So 0.1 gigahertz is defined. So that's where we'll perform the, uh, the load pull. Uh, we also replaced the default port, which would come with the, uh, the automation of the load pull template through the scripting. Uh, we've replaced that through the swap element, placed a single tone uh, input port uh, with a two-tone port and also spe specified that the, the delta frequency between the two tones uh, is, is, again, that 0.1 gigahertz. Uh, and then we specify the sweep. And then once we've set that up, uh, we also use the load pull uh, script to walk us through the setup to perform the actual uh, load pull analysis. And uh, this is where we can specify that we want to do harmonic tuning on the source uh, using the source tuner or the load tuner. And we just select which one. So uh, we'll sweep the bass band frequency, but we'll keep all the other harmonics fixed. Or we could do multiple. We could we could nest these sweeps. So we could sweep the the bass band impedance as well as the fundamental or any harmonics. And then we progress through the wizard, and it will then bring up uh, input for specifying uh, the measurement points of which we're going to use to sweep the uh, bass band impedance. Um, so we're basically specifying the gamma points used in the simulation. And then we have a visual tool uh, showing where the measurement points would be. So like in this case, we're just going to sweep across the entire Smith chart. Then the, the final input in setting up a load pull analysis is to define uh, the data file that will contain the information, the results from our sweep. Uh, as well as specifying the uh, where we're obtaining the gate and drain bias information from, as well as uh, specifying which one is the source tuner and which one's the load tuner. And then we hit simulate and we would go ahead and perform the, um, the sweep, which could be over frequency range, over the power range, or any other parameter that we might want to sweep. Uh, and it will generate a data file with those parametric sweeps, which we've already done. And uh, our data file with that information is contained in this data file here. So now, having performed a baseband load pull, we can look at some very interesting results. I've plotted some measurement results versus swept baseband impedance and swept input power. The plot to the left shows the baseband gamma points, as well as the constant performance contours for the lower and upper frequency third order intermod products. Uh, in 2db steps. These are measured relative to the fundamental power. We define the specific tone through the harmonic parameter with 0 0.9 being the lower third order product and 1.2 being the upper product. The performance contours shown were derived for the lowest input power as shown in the plot to the upper right. Placing a measurement marker on one of the contours shows that the Intermod product is 32 dB down from the fundamental, and as we move the marker toward the center of the contours, the relative power between the fundamental and the third order product increases in 2 dB steps. As I mentioned, these contours are linked to the data specified by the marker position on the power index plot, which we can move to dynamically update the contours for different power levels. The general shape and position of the minimum IMD product shown to be close to the short circuit on the Smith chart remains relatively unchanged at lower power levels where the active device is operating in the linear region. As the power index moves to higher power levels, where the active device starts to compress, we see the impact on the upper and lower IMD contours changing and the load associated with the minimum IMD shifts towards an open circuit and the upper and lower IMD contours start to diverge. Next, we can look at the power at the fundamental and third order intermod frequencies versus swept input power for different baseband impedances as shown in the two plots to the right. The results for all the gamma points used by the baseband load pull are plotted with the IMD power levels plotted in light gray to indicate the possible IMD performance versus input power for different baseband impedances. A marker on the Smith chart is linked to a specific gamma point allowing us to dynamically pick a baseband gamma and see the in-band third order product shown highlighted in red.
This allows a designer to choose a baseband impedance that minimizes the third order product for a given input power. If the PA is likely to frequently operate into compression, the baseband load can be chosen accordingly. We could also look directly at the IMD and the two input tones on a spectrum plot, similar to what we would see on a spectrum analyzer uh, in a lab. Again, these results are linked to markers on the power index and baseband gamma point plots. As we drive the amplifier harder, we can see the third order products growing faster than the excitation tones as we would expect from theory. We also see the baseband contours diverge so that the minimum third order product for the upper and lower distortion products occur at different gamma points. Many PA designers will recognize the potential for uneven third order tones based on their bias network and this new feature in version 15 allows designers to address this through simulation. I hope you found this demo of the new load call capabilities in version 15 useful and please visit the Cadence AWR micro site awr.com for more information or reach out to your Cadence sales representative. Thank you.